In this episode, we're going to look at um, the key processes which lead to the erosion of uh, coastlines or coastal zones. We're going to be dealing with um, coasts that are cliffed rather than beaches, uh, because this is where we see most of the uh, really sort of obvious erosional processes at work. And uh, we're going to examine how the coast actually changes as a result of um, erosion and look at some of the key features that are linked to those uh, processes. Before we kick off, you just need to make sure that you fully understand uh, some of the key terms involved here. Um, erosion here is the wearing away of the land involving movement. Okay, so the movement could be caused by the wind or in this case water. So as water flows or impacts on a surface, it leads to that surface being broken down, worn away, erosion. There are four key types of uh, erosion within that sort of broad title. These are hydraulic action, which is the sheer force of water. Imagine, uh, for example, if somebody was to spray you with a hose pipe, you would feel the impact of the water on your body. That it would eventually, if it was played onto a rock, um, wear that rock away. Abrasion is like the sandpaper effect, so when water is moving, it often carries with it grains of sand and stones and so on, and that literally acts like sandpaper and grinds away a surface. So a wave brushing against the cliff line will abrade the surface because it's carrying bits of sand and stone. Attrition involves the uh, impacts between loose sediments, so pieces of rock being carried around by the water, bash together, and as they bash together they knock chunks off each other and the particles then become smaller and more rounded. Solution, um, this is uh, the dissolving of particular sorts of rock which are um, more liable to, to uh, being broken down chemically. But as water passes over a surface, if that surface is susceptible to um, dissolving, then solution will be at work. OK, you'll need to come back to these terms, make sure that you understand them fully, look them up on the internet, um, just to be confident that you've got a sort of clear understanding. So if we look at the cross-section of a piece of cliff um, here, um, what we can see is that the action of the sea has a limit, a vertical limit. So this area here is going to be susceptible to the action of waves and the flow of the tides and currents and so on. Now, because the water is flowing across that part of the cliff, um, erosional processes can work at, at the rocks and the consequence of that is that the material that was in this zone here is actually washed away, is broken down, washed away and the feature left behind is what's known as a wave cut notch. Now obviously the effect of taking away this material from the bottom of the cliff is that the area above it here will become much less stable and eventually it will collapse into the sea where it will then be broken down further until it is small enough to be washed away. Once that's happened, the new part of the cliff, so this area here, is then vulnerable to further erosion and the process repeats itself again. And the diagram neatly shows um, several positions of the former cliff line before um, the last episode of erosion took place. In this particular case, um, because the ground inland is rising here, as erosion occurs and the cliff recedes, the cliff height actually increases. One of the key features that's left behind by this kind of uh, this set of processes is what's known as a wave cut platform, and that literally is the platform left sort of at the base of where the waves can have an effect. So they don't reach all the way down deep into the ocean, um, and so they will tend to carve off and sand down a nice level platform which is known as a wave cut platform. So, quick recheck, the key features that you need to be aware of here, you have the cliff itself, you have the wave cut notch which is that gap there, and then you have the wave cut platform which is this area here. So let's see if we can uh, identify some of these features on a photograph of a real place. Okay, at this uh, very famous South Dorset location um, we've got some really classical uh, coastal features of erosion. So we'll kick off just by um, picking up some of the key features. Um, obviously we have areas of cliff, so this area here and this big chunk of rock here has got a cliff on it. The rock here is actually attached to the mainland and so it sticks out as a promontory into the sea and we would call that a headland. Um, these big chunks of rock which are separated from the mainland are termed stacks and then if we look at some smaller scale features, 
we have the wave cut platforms we mentioned earlier on there's a little bit here as well we've got the wave cut notch you can see it in shadow there and we also have um, some caves there and there and a place where the cave has eroded all the way through this particular stack there which we would call an arch now people would conjecture that in the past there was probably land going all the way across here sticking out into the sea to form a much bigger headland and over time there would be an arch form caves and arch forming there caves and arch forming here and then eventually those arches would collapse to leave behind these isolated pillars of rock so key features that you would be expected to know and be able to identify on either a diagram or a photograph um, are now labelled onto this photograph. So starting off from the left hand side we have the headland sticking out into the sea. It is comprised of a cliff, so is the other bit, so are the other big stacks. As you go further across we can see the wave cut platform, we can see a couple of caves you can see where a cave is cut right the way through the stack to form an arch. You can see two stacks here, and we can also see a nice shady wave cut notch. Now, if you think back to the diagram that showed how the cliff retreats, you can imagine that as these arches and caves and the wave cut notch get bigger and bigger and more and more eroded, chunks of the cliff then collapse into the sea. So eventually, um, not only will the stacks disappear and collapse here and here, um, but so too will parts of the headland. And gradually over time, all these features will basically disappear into the sea as a result of erosion. And in consequence, this coastline will retreat back towards the mainland. So we can look at these um, processes together uh, in the form of a cycle that might affect um, cliffs, particularly if they're in headlands. Um, and the diagram here is basically a cross section of a headland. Um, and what we're going to do is build up the uh, labels and the features um, onto it. First, we have the cliffs and uh, the headland sticking out from the mainland. And a weakness is evident in the cliff, and this will gradually be eroded more than the surrounding cliffs to form a cave. Over time, waves bashing into the, into the cave itself will break through to the other side of the headland, and they will leave behind this feature called an arch. And in time, as erosion continues and enlarges the arch, the top of it will collapse into the sea, um, and I've indicated where that would have happened previously here and the effect would be to leave behind this isolated pillar of rock here which we call a stack. Now erosion doesn't stop with the formation of a stack obviously and in time the stack will become smaller and it may collapse and it will leave behind a residue of rock, a little, little knob of rock really, um, which might be covered at high tide and that little nodule we call a stump. Now We've got a whole series of features then that can form over time and the ones that are furthest out to sea obviously are those that have been exposed to the most erosion and therefore they tend to be the smallest and most worn away. Um, we obviously can see these same features all in one place like we do at Old Harry Rocks but we can also see it as how this piece of cliff might change over time. So starting with the cliff and the headland, wearing away in, in the weakness, causing a cave to form. Gradually that cave turns into an arch. The arch eventually collapses to leave an isolated pillar of rock, which then increasingly gets eroded to form a stump. Now, while you've got all these features to remember, don't forget also that working away at the bottom of the cliff, you've got the process of erosion, which are hydraulic action, attrition, abrasion, and solution. And they will create the wave cut notches and the wave cut platforms that we started talking about at the beginning of this session. So there you have it. We started off by looking at the processes of erosion, processes being things that happen, and the processes create features. Okay, And one of the effects of those processes of erosion was that the coastal cliffs uh, retreat, and they retreat back in towards the, the mainland. Um, we then looked at a real-world example of coastal retreat, cliff retreat, 
and some of the features of erosion at Old Harry Rocks in South Dorset. And then we looked at those features a little bit more in detail and a bit more theoretically using the diagram. And we can see that the features actually form a continuum over time as a coastline is eroded, but they can also be seen as a snapshot like we did at um, Old Harry. So they're all present at the same time 